Welcome to This Week in Gear, the news show for product enthusiasts. I'm Nick Caruso. Summer is in full swing, and I hope you're able to enjoy it as much as you possibly can. I also hope you're being as smart as you possibly can and as safe as you possibly can. Now, the best way to do that is to wear a mask. You can be considerate of both other people's health and take care of your own. So if you're in need of a new mask or just a mask in general, check out the first link in the description below. It goes to a post called 18 cloth face masks that actually look good because you must wear a mask and you might as well look great doing so. We're also covering other stories in this week's episode, namely the newest version of the Land Rover Defender and why it's the one we've been waiting for, 10 of the most gorgeous tech products of 2020, and a $23 bottle of bourbon and why it's so important to spirits enthusiasts, plus a lot more. If you want any more information about any of the stories we cover in this week's episode, check the description below. There are other links to our online coverage. Follow us on social media where you'll find a bunch of other stories and a lot more coverage. And of course, subscribe here on YouTube so you never miss any video, news, and reviews. And with that, let's get started. The all-new Land Rover Defender finally debuted last year and the cheapest one you can buy in the US is $51,000. But Land Rover has announced a stripped down bare bones version, the Defender Hardtop, which will come in two and four door sizes. Now to be clear, right now no Defenders are being sold with a soft top or removable top. The hardtop name is an allusion to the Series 1 Defender from decades ago, which could be outfitted with a hardtop for added security. Inside, the hardtop has only a first row bench seat for up to three people. Behind that first row is a big open box that might be perfect for overlanding conversions. Just saying. The hardtop is also optimized for towing up to 7,700 pounds and an advanced tow assist system is available along with all the other Land Rover electronics, computers, and advanced driver assistance systems. Caveat here is Land Rover is only talking about offering the Defender hardtop in the UK, where it will sell for 35,500 pounds or around 45,000 US dollars. But that's almost 13% less than the current entry level US market Defender 90. And given enough demand, there's always a chance the brand might make it available in the States as well. There don't seem to be any mechanical differences between it and the US version after all, so it likely wouldn't be too hard to federalize it for our shores. When we consider what it means to be a good product, the most important quality to think about is probably functionality. After all, if a product doesn't do what it's supposed to do and do it well, then it's not a very good product. Second in line to functionality, aesthetics. If a product looks good, we're more enticed to buy it and use it. And if you get high marks in both categories, well, that's a winner. The Red Dot Design Awards are given annually to the best designed products of the year. We covered the other categories online and you can find links down below in the description. But these are the top 10 most beautiful tech products of 2020. The annual Red Dot Design Awards are the result of a German design competition for the best designed products of the year. The prestigious competition has taken place every year since 1955 and spans a number of categories, including cars, watches, cookware, and more. Every one of the tech products on this list is a newly minted Red Dot Design Award winner for 2020. Here's what the awards jury had to say about each product. The Google Nest Mini houses a large number of smart functions in a compact design and enhances any room with its appealing appearance. The Sonos Move captivates with a universal design which brings together robustness for outdoor use and understated elegance for indoor use. The elegantly designed Bose portable home speaker is impressively versatile. It is perfectly set up for use while on the go and cuts a good figure at home as well. Apple AirPods Pro lift the quality of in-ear headphones to a new level. They are very light and deliver an impressively powerful, immersive sound. The Technics SL1200 series sets standards for turntables with a direct drive, thus making it ideal for professional DJs. 
An iconic looking shape, as well as highly sophisticated technical equipment, characterized the clear Crescent Smart Audio Speaker. The LG OLED Signature TV is captivating with its understated design and inventive bracket which allows the TV to blend into the wall. The design of the Motorola Razr reinterprets the appearance of classic flip phone models. Elegantly designed, it rests comfortably in the hand and evokes nostalgic memories. The NVIDIA Shield TV media player and remote control are appealing with their standalone design which creates a sense of uniformity despite their differing geometry. The elegant Anchor PowerPort Atom 3 Slim Power Bank impresses with its extraordinarily thin profile and remarkable performance. 23 bucks. That's what a bottle of Old Tub Bourbon will set you back. It's not really breaking the bank. And to be fair, Old Tub probably isn't on your top 10 or 20 or 50 list of most coveted whiskeys in the world either. But here's why this sort of pedestrian bourbon is so important to the spirits industry. Old Tub is the foundation of what Jim Beam is today. When the distillery started selling actual bottles of whiskey, it was called Old Tub. The distillery kept that name from 1880 to 1943 when it was officially renamed Jim Beam. Since then, the name Old Tub has been relegated to a Kentucky-only bourbon release nobody but diehards knew about. It was only available in 375 milliliter sizes in a flask-shaped bottle. The Old Tub you'll see on shelves now is the first large-scale re-release of the brand since it was replaced almost 80 years ago. It's aged four to five years, is cut to 100 proof, and remains a bottled in bond offering. Gear Patrol's outdoor and fitness editor, Steve Mizuki, has found a product that combines exercise with errand running, and I got to talk to him about it. Steve, can you hear me? Nick, what's going on? Hey buddy, I'm calling from Michigan. You're still in New York, yeah? I am, yes. This uh, framed portrait behind me is is actually a window into what you would see if that wall didn't exist. Oh, it's very helpful. I appreciate the, the thought. <laughs> um, so you're still in New York. That means you are getting, and you always, before all this went down, you were commuting around on your bike and riding your bike long distances and such. You still do that. And you have a new product that you're using to make that easier for you. I, I do and I do. <laughs> I'm very excited about this. It's the uh, Apidura Packable Backpack. Um, okay. And this is essentially a 13 liter pack that weighs less than four ounces and you can very easily strap it onto your bike's top tube and you can ride okay. anywhere you wanna go. And then when you wanna you know, pick up some groceries on the way home or run a, another errand, you can very quickly unfurl it and it turns into a pretty convenient pack for uh, carrying a good amount of stuff. Right on. This, it's really cool. I mean, it's, just, it's so light that you'd probably forget it's even there most of the time. Yeah, I mean, that's what, what really is cool to me about it is the fact that like, when I do go on a long bike ride, I try to keep things pretty streamlined. So I don't sure. want to have like a full backpack on my back. I pretty much just have like, you know, my uh, the tools that I can like fit in my jersey with like, you know, my credit cards and some cash and my keys. And that's about it. Right. So to have this thing that just very seamlessly fits onto the top tube and stays out of the way is super convenient and doesn't interfere with like, you know, long distance riding. Right. Yeah. It's I mean, it's it's a really cool sort of cycling specific version of of uh, the um like reusable shopping bags my mom keeps in her trunk yeah kind of yeah right yeah and i, I definitely feel a sense of satisfaction when they ask me if i need a bag <laughs> at the grocery store right. and i'm like nope <laughs> yeah got one thanks and the other selling point on this is only 50 bucks or it's less than 50 bucks yeah it's like it's 47 dollars, and they also make a smaller one a, a musette pack which i have as well um this yeah. one is oh, yeah. about half the size when it's packed down um okay. and it's a seven liter pack um that that's right. almost more of like a messenger bag like a very small messenger bag yeah. Sure, like a sling almost. the The bigger one has internal pockets too, or has it like additional pockets? It, yeah. Did so, I see that right? Yeah. So basically, it has um, 
It has a roll top closure and then there are two external pockets that okay. are great for like slipping like a tall boy into. That's about <laughs> the size. Hypothetically. I, <laughs> hypothetically. I may or may not have tried that at some point. But yeah, like when you when you fill up a grocery bag with like a you know, a standard run for a few days, you can yep. definitely throw like a couple peanut butter jars or tall boys or any anything in that sort of vessel shape. Right. Just just the essentials, just a jar of peanut butter and a big beer. Exactly. Right? <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> I mean, as the outdoors and fitness editor, I can highly endorse those kinds That's of right. things. That's right. You got your you got your fats, you got your carbs, you got your hydration. Exactly. Uh, everything all in one. It's optimal nutrient uh, mix. <laughs> right. Well, very cool. You're going to keep on using that throughout all of this. It sounds like a perfect accessory to have right now and maybe always if you're cycling around anywhere. Yeah, definitely. I highly recommend it. Right on, man. Well, any other final thoughts as we bid each other adieu? Uh, I guess the only other thing I would say is like biking has become hugely popular the last few months. Just, uh, you know, be as safe as you can. Look both ways before you cross the street. That kind of stuff. Yeah. And wear a mask when you're around other people. Also that. <laughs> It's a lot of safety to remember, but it's all worth it. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, Steve, for the rundown. It's a really cool product. And uh, hopefully uh, they don't fly off the shelves too fast so everybody can get one if they want one. Yeah, man. Good talking to you. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Sounds Thanks. Good. See ya. Bye. Like I said up top, the gear news doesn't stop here on YouTube, and it certainly doesn't stop online. Check out our social channels for much more. Here's my colleague, Aisha Lopez, to talk about next week's Instagram story schedule. Hey everyone, I'm Aisha, and here's what's going on on our social media next week. Kicking off the week, we're featuring motoring desk Tyler Duffy, who'll be driving a Ram 1500. Tuesday is tech testing with Tucker Bow. He'll be uncovering Klipsch the Fives, a tabletop sound system. Wednesday is Whiskey with Will Price, our home and drinks editor. Thursday, we're talking about the 8K UHD, what it is, and why you need it. And finally, Friday, we're looking at the tempur Cloud Mattress with our editorial associate, Scott Ulrich. See you all on our Instagram page at Gear Patrol. Feel free to send us any of your product questions and let us know what you think. Back to you, Nick. That's it for this week's episode. Thanks for spending time with us. If you have any more questions or want to air an opinion, pop it in the comments below and we'll get back to you. And for now, I hope you have a great week and a safe week. Remember, please, please wear a mask. For now, take care. We'll see you next time.